When we are doing the E2 reaction on a cyclic molecule, we have to be even more careful about the stereospecificity of the reaction. Remember from the last video, we talked about how in order for the E2 reaction to be successful, the leaving group and the hydrogen have to be in an anti-coplanar configuration, meaning that there needs to be a 180 degree dihedral angle between the leaving group and the hydrogen. In the last video, we looked at this for straight chain molecules, rotating them as necessary so that we could get the leaving group and the hydrogen into this anticoplanar configuration. For a cyclic molecule, the anticoplanar configuration can only be achieved when the leaving group is on an axial bond in the chair conformation. So let's start, um, because it's probably been a while since you've thought about chair conformations. Let's start by drawing the chair conformation of this reactant. So I'm going to draw it right here. And if you recall from when we were learning how to draw chair conformations, after I draw the chair conformation, I like to sketch in the bonds on each carbon to make sure that I am following the rule of alternating up, down, up, down, up, down, all axial, and then alternating my equatorial bonds as well. It's important to me that I start with that because this way I know for sure that I have all of my bonds on every carbon pointing in the right direction. So once I have this template already sketched out, now I'm going to fill in, on that template, I'm going to fill in the three substituents on the ring. So I can choose, I'm going to start with this carbon right here, and I can choose to put that carbon anywhere I want to on the ring. Any one of those six carbons could be this guy right here. I do know that because of this situation over here, I do know that I want my bromine to be on one of the axial bonds on the ring because I want it to be in that straight up or straight down position. And for me personally, I always like to think of the dash bond as a down bond. So I want, I don't need, but I want to put my bromine in any one of these three places here just because I want it to be axial and I want it to be down. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and choose to put my bromine right here. And on the same carbon where I have my down bromine, I also have an up methyl group. So that's going to be right there. So I have designated this as carbon number one. I'm going to follow that with the ring. And then I'm just going to continue around the ring. So going counterclockwise to my next carbon, which I'll just go ahead and call carbon number two, going counterclockwise this will be carbon number two. On this carbon, I have a methyl group that is a wedge, which means it's in the up position. So on carbon number two, there is the up position, the methyl group in the wedge, and there's also a hydrogen on carbon number two as well in the down position. Um, so let's, now that we have this sort of drawn in, the rest of the bonds here are bonds to hydrogen, so we can fill those in as well. Or we could have just deleted them, it doesn't matter. So now that we have this, this molecule represented in a chair conformation with our leaving group in an axial position, now let's start thinking about elimination. In the elimination reaction, we remove the halogen, the leaving group, from the carbon, and we're going to remove a hydrogen from any one of the adjacent carbons in the molecule. So using that same color coding, we're gonna remove the carbon, or remove the leaving group from carbon number one, and we're also going to remove a hydrogen from any one of the adjacent carbons. We are only able to remove a hydrogen if it is in this anti-coplanar arrangement with respect to the leaving group. So for the leaving group in this position, in the axial down, 
we can only remove a hydrogen if it's axial up. Let's start by looking at this guy right here. This guy right here has the hydrogen in an equatorial down position. So if we look at our Newman projection, it would be like having the leaving group in this configuration and the hydrogen in this configuration. So they're not in the right orientation. We cannot get any elimination occurring in this spot because the hydrogen is not anticoplanar to the bromine. So nothing is gonna happen over here. Now on this side, going in this direction, we do have a hydrogen that is axial up and anticoplanar to the bromine. So we can put a double bond in this location right here. And let's sketch what that would actually look like in terms of our mechanism and the product of the reactions. The mechanism, we would grab this hydrogen specifically, we would move the carbon hydrogen electrons down into this bond and get rid of the leaving group. And now I'm gonna switch to a regular drawing. And I'm actually gonna really rearrange things because I'm gonna move it back to this sort of position right here. We are putting our double bond in between carbon one and six. So that's gonna be in this direction right here. Since we did not do anything at all to carbon number two, we have made no changes at all to the stereochemistry of that carbon. And carbon number one has a methyl group on it. It is no longer a wedge methyl because this carbon is no longer chiral because it is uh, part of a double bond. So here is the one and only product that can be formed if we remove one of these hydrogens. We also have the possibility of removing a hydrogen from this carbon as well. Because this carbon is out of the ring, we can absolutely form a double bond moving out of the ring. It's gonna look like this. And we don't have to worry at all about any sort of stereochemistry there. Um, there are three hydrogens on that carbon and this can freely rotate to get the bromine and one of these hydrogens in the correct anticoplanar arrangement. So here are the two products that we can make by doing elimination, E2 elimination on this molecule. I know that this is pretty overwhelming, so let's practice it again with this example down here. So with a cyclic molecule, again, we have to think about getting the leaving group, in this case OTS, into an axial position, either up or down, and we need to have a hydrogen that is also in an axial position, but in the opposite direction. So if this is down, then our hydrogen has to be up, both of them in the, and in the axial position. So let's go ahead and draw our chair conformation and sketch in the position of all the bonds. And let's start by drawing in our OTS. Because it's on a dash, I want it to be down. That's my preference. And because it's my leaving group, I want it to be axial. So I'm gonna put the tosylate OTS right here and the other functional group or the other thing on that carbon is a hydrogen. And then I have got, I've got to think about removing a hydrogen from either one of the adjacent carbons. So if this is my leaving group, here's one carbon and here's the other carbon where a double bond could go. If I'm going counterclockwise, which is this way around the ring, if this is my carbon number one, I'll call this guy carbon number two, which is right up here. This carbon number two has a methyl in the up position, so a methyl group right here, which means the hydrogen is on the dash in the down position. And just realized that I wrote two, two times. So this is carbon number one. So if our, if our leaving group is axial down, we would need our hydrogen to be axial up and it's not. So we cannot get any elimination taking place between these two carbons. The only possible location for elimination is between these two carbons. Let's go ahead and draw that mechanism. So we've got two hydrogens here. 
The one that is going to be abstracted is the one that is in the axial up position. And that will give us a double bond in between carbon one and six with no change at all to carbon number two. So here's carbon one and there's carbon two. Now it's it's important that you it's important to me that you understand the the relevance of the chair conformation in helping us predict the product of this reaction. But for a shortcut for these cyclic molecules, you are able to do elimination between any two carbon atoms where the leaving group and a hydrogen are trans to each other. So we'll make a note. You can okay to do E2 between any two carbons with a leaving group, let's say the leaving group is on the wedge and a hydrogen on the dash or vice versa. So a dash leaving group and a wedge hydrogen. Let's, let's take a look at what that means. So if we go back to this example right here, if we have our dash leaving group that means we can do E2 elimination between any hydrogen on any one of those three carbons that is in the wedge position. So if our leaving group is on a dash, our hydrogen needs to be on a wedge. They need to be trans to each other, one up and one down. So because our leaving group is on a dash, we can do elimination between this hydrogen, which is on a wedge, or one of these hydrogens, you know, we have one on a wedge, we have one on a dash, we have one on a straight chain, we have a lot of hydrogens up here. But we can't do elimination between this hydrogen and this bromine because they're both on the dash, they're cis to each other. So we were able to do elimination here and here, but we could not do it over here. And then looking down at this example as well, our leaving group again is on the dash, which means that we can do elimination between any hydrogen that would be on a wedge. So in this position, we have a hydrogen on a wedge and a hydrogen on a dash. We can do elimination between this wedge hydrogen and the dash leaving group, that will work. But in this direction, the leaving group is on the dash and the hydrogen is on the dash, which means we can't do elimination between those two. This rule will always work, always, unless, so there is an exception, unless you can't ring flip the molecule. Remember, a ring flip is where we change the position of all the substituents. So an axial up, it, when it undergoes ring flip, becomes an equatorial down. And as long as the molecule is capable of ring flipping, you're always going to be able to get the leaving group into an axial position, either up or down. And if it has a trans hydrogen, it will also be able to go into the axial position either up or down. The only time that this will not work is when the molecule is not capable of ring flipping, and that's what we're going to look at in the next video.